In this video, we're going to discuss the accounting for gain and loss contingencies. Let's take a look at what a contingency is. A contingency is an existing condition, situation, or set of circumstances involving uncertainty as to possible gains or losses to an enterprise that will ultimately be resolved when one or more future events occurs or fails to occur. I think there's three key parts here. First, it's an existing condition. Something has already happened. It involves uncertainty as to a possible future outcome. And the gain or loss will be resolved when future events either occur or fail to occur. So it's an existing condition involving uncertainty and it relates to events that will either occur or, fut or fail to occur in the future. Let's go ahead and take a look at gain contingencies first, then we'll discuss loss contingencies. The first and most important thing we need to know about gain contingencies, they aren't reported. We don't record them. They are disclosed only if the probability of receipt of the future amount is high. So we do not record them on our financial statements. We only disclose them in the footnotes. Let's take a look at some possible gain contingencies. Gain contingencies might include the possible receipt of money from gifts, donations, asset sales, and so on possible refunds from the government in tax disputes, pending court cases with probable favorable future outcomes, or tax loss carry forwards, which we'll discuss in chapter 19. But again, the important thing to remember, gain contingencies are not recorded. We only disclose them in the financial statements in the footnotes if the probability of receipt is high. Loss contingencies. We involve three different types of measurements of loss as defined by the FASB. Though it can either be probable, which means greater than 50%. Think about it. If there's a 49% chance of something happening, that means that there's a 51% chance that it's not going to happen. So probably won't. So probable means greater than 50%. Then we also have reasonably possible and we have remote. So remote, reasonably possible, and probable. Reasonably possible just sort of falls between the probable and remote. We don't have good numbers as accountants or rules of thumb for reasonably possible or remote. They vary a great deal throughout um, the industry and between accounting firms and accountants. Um, typically what we're going to do is rely on legal representation letters. Those are letters from attorneys stating that, hey, the firm has a possible loss contingency and we think it's either probable, reasonably possible, or remote. And these are the numbers that we assign to it or perhaps we can't assign numbers to it. So again, three different types of probabilities. Um, probable, reasonably possible, remote and we've got three different ways to account for them. We either accrue a number, we put it in the footnotes, or we ignore it altogether. Let's go ahead and take a look at each one of those. If it's remote, we ignore it. We don't put it in the footnotes, we don't put a number on the financial statements. If it's reasonably possible, which means it's not probable, but it's greater than remote, well then we will disclose the loss contingency in our footnotes. Finally, what if it's probable? Greater than a 50% chance of happening. It depends. If we can't come up with a reasonable estimate, in other words, we can't put a number on it, well, we obviously can't put a number on the balance sheet and an income statement, so we'll just disclose it in footnotes. On the other hand, if we can come up with a reasonable estimate, we will accrue the loss and we will record the liability on our balance sheet. Let's take a look at some loss contingencies that we usually accrue. Typically, think about the collectability of receivables. You know, we're not going to collect all the money from our customers. We don't know who, we don't know what. It's, it's subject to what? A, the occurrence or failure to occur of a future event. So what do we do? We record a bad debt expense, a loss right now, and we record an allowance for doubtful accounts. Obligations related to product warranties and product defects. Again, we don't know which of our products are going to break down, how many of them are going to break down, but we're probably going to have some warranty claims. And if we have very much experience, we can put a number on it. If we can put a number on it, we will accrue that warranty obligation on our financial statements in the current period. If we don't have much experience with it and can't come up with a good number, well, then we will just disclose it in our footnotes. 
premiums offered to customers. Those are rebates or other forms of incentive that we expect customers to exercise. So these are ones that we typically accrue. Then there are loss um, con contingencies that aren't accrued. The risk or loss or damage of an enterprise by uh, fire, explosion, or other hazards. These are future events. We have no idea if they're going to happen or how, what kind of damage might be incurred. General or unspecified business risk. The risk of loss from catastrophes assumed by property and casualty insurance companies. None of these are accrued. We might accrue losses related to threats of expropriation of assets by the government or other entities, pending or threatened litigation, actual or possible claims and assessment, guarantees of indebtedness of others. So in other words, if we've stepped in and promised to pay someone back, if the borrower doesn't, and it looks like that borrower isn't, we're going to have to step up and make good on that guarantee. We might accrue a loss. And again, we will accrue it if both those conditions are met. It's both probable and we can come up with a reasonable estimate. So again, gain contingencies are not recorded, disclosed only if the probability of receipt is high. Loss contingencies, if it's remote, we ignore it. If it's reasonably possible, we disclose it in the footnotes. If it's probable, greater than 50%, but we can't come up with a reasonable estimate, we put it in the footnotes. If we can come up with a reasonable estimate, we accrue it. If we've got a range of possible losses, we will accrue the low end, disclose the range, and particularly include the high end of the range. Let's take a look at some examples. We're told that salt and pepper became involved in a tax dispute with the IRS, and the attorneys have indicated that it's probable. Oh, so there we got that keyword probable. So we know that we are going to have to either accrue or disclose it in the footnotes that we're going to lose the dispute. They also believe that salt and pepper will have to pay the IRS between 900,000 and 1.4 million. So we've got a range. So what do we do? We're going to want to accrue the low end and disclose the high end. The fact that after the financial statements were issued that the case was settled for 1.2 million doesn't matter. It's much like our estimated allowance for doubtful accounts. We're never going to be exactly right. It's simply an estimate and we don't go back and make changes to our financial statements for estimates that turned out to be incorrect. B, we are told that on October 1, Allen Jackson Chemical was identified as a potential responsible party by the Environmental Protection Agency and that Jackson's management, along with this council, have concluded that it's probable, but there's that word, probable that Jackson's going to be responsible. We're probable, so we do have a contingency that we will either accrue or disclose. And a reasonable estimate of the damages is $5 million. So Jackson is going to need to accrue a $5 million loss and liability. Let's go on. We're told that Jackson has an insurance policy for $9 million with a $500,000 deductible. Notice, these are two separate contingencies. The loss contingency, reasonable estimate, and it's probable, we need to make an accrual for $5 million. The second contingency relating to a potential insurance recovery, if it's probable we're going to get it, which it sounds like it is, we have an insurance policy. We don't record a gain contingency, we simply disclose it in the footnotes to our financial statements. So again, record the loss contingency, disclose the gain contingency. Finally, we're told Melissa Etheridge has a manufacturing plant in Sudan which was destroyed in the Civil War. It's not certain who's going to compensate Etheridge for the destruction, but Etheridge has been assured by the government officials that it will receive a definite amount for the plant. The amount of the compensation will be less than the fair value of the plant. Ooh, it's sounding like a loss, but notice we're talking the fair value of the plant but more than the plant's book value. If we get more than the book value, then from an accounting perspective, we will have a gain. So we don't have a loss, but rather a gain contingency. And gain contingencies are not recorded. They're only disclosed when the probabilities are high that the gain will become a reality. So again, gain contingencies not recorded, loss contingencies, 
can be classified as probable, more than 50%, remote, or somewhere in between, reasonably possible. Remote, we ignore. Reasonably possible, footnote, probable, if we can't come up with a number, we can't put it on the financial statement, so we simply disclose. But if we can come up with a reasonable estimate, we accrue.